Consider here we have a uniform bar with the center of rotations at the mid span of the bar. At one end of the bar we have a spring with stiffness constant K and at the other end is a damper with damping constant C. The bar has mass M and second mass moment of inertia J. Note that this is a uniform bar, so the center of mass or the center of gravity is exactly at the mid span of the bar. So in this case, it is exactly at the center of rotations. The bar rotates with angle theta. And let's put the displacement of the damper x1 and displacement of the spring x2. If O is the center of rotations, according to D'Alembert principle, the resultance of external moment at point O is equal to the inertia moment also at point O. Because the center of gravity is here at point O, then the displacement of the center of gravity is zero. Therefore, the inertial moment at point O is J multiplied by theta double dot, or the angle acceleration. Now, where does the external moment come from? First, we have the force from the spring. So we know that if this end of the bar goes up, there's always a spring force tries to pull back down the bar. So we put this force as Fk. Second, we have the force from the damper. And because the damper dissipates the energy, we can write down here that the force Fc is against the directions of the motions of the bar. And thus, it will produce the moment at point O, which is also in opposite directions with the initial moment. Remember the concept of moment or torque. If we have a translational force F acting at the end of an arm with length D, the moment at the center of rotations is F multiplied by D. And note that directions of F must be perpendicular to the arm. Okay, so the resultance of the external moment at point O is the damper force multiplied by the length of the arm, which is L over 2. And this must be minus. And the spring force multiplied by uh, its arm, which is also L over 2. So minus Fk multiplied by L over 2. The damping force is the damping constant C multiplied by the velocity of the damper. So minus C multiplied by x1 dot. And the force from the spring is the stiffness constant K multiplied by the displacement of the spring x2. So minus K multiplied by x2. Notice that we don't have a uniform coordinate here. So we have theta, we have x1 and also x2. To represent an equation of motion with a single coordinate, we have to choose one coordinate as the generalized coordinate. Say we choose the rotational displacement theta as the generalized coordinate. So what we have to do is we have to find the relations of x1 and x2 in terms of theta. If theta is assuming small, then we can express x1 equals to L over 2 multiplied by theta and x2 equals to L over 2 multiplied by theta. So let's bring the math to the next screen. So because we have found x1 and x2 in terms of theta, so we can substitute x1 and x2. So then we have minus C L over 2 theta dot L over 2. Don't forget to put dot on theta and minus K L over 2 theta L over 2. And finally, we have this one. Therefore, according to D'Alembert principle, where the resultance of the initial moment at point O is equals to the resultance of external moments at point O. So we have J theta double dot equals to minus C L square over 4 theta dot minus K L square over 4 theta. 
we can then bring all of this to the left hand side and so finally we have the equation of motions of the system. Mm -hmm.